Teenage detectives Anna and Vika were in the stakeout at the home of elderly veterans, aiming to catch a gang of villains red-handed. This gang specialized in robbing pensioners. The scoundrels posed as social workers in order to gain entry to the victims' homes and steal valuable possessions from vulnerable seniors. Good day! Free aid for veterans! Elderly Oscar and Amanda fell for the fraudsters. At first, the uninvited guests began tidying up their home, acting like Jenny and social workers. But as soon as the seniors' vigilance waned, the criminals drugged them with gas. Wasting no time, they started packing all the valuable items they could find into bags. Even veterans' military honors became their loot. For the sisters, these pieces of evidence were enough to start apprehending the gang. Let's go! Starting the operation! Drones had complete control over the entire surrounding area. Computer whiz Zuza activated a remote-controlled mini-tank loaded with nails. The gang's car was immobilized with no chance of escaping the crime scene. Anna hypnotized one of the bandits who stood on guard, thereby clearing the way for the main attacking force of their team, Vicky. Hands up! What the f The bandits were dumbfounded by such a turn of events and raised their hands. Vicky put handcuffs on one of the thieves, but his partner had no intention of surrendering so easily. She grabbed a gun, but missed. A shootout began. The bandit van driver tried to escape, but because of the flat tires, the guy lost control and ended up in a dumpster. The shootout inside the house continued. The criminal ran out of bullets. Trapped, she sees the grandpa's old-school machine gun. The balance of power shifted instantly. Now Vicky had to dodge the bullets. Zuza saw that the situation was getting out of control and used his drone to knock out the bandit. The team acted professionally. In no time, the gang of scammers was neutralized. Already in court, the sisters proved the gang's guilt with a recorded video. It took the police a lot of struggle to catch this gang in the act. Finally, the villains got what they deserved. Shameless scoundrels! For their contributions to society, the city mayor awarded the detective team an honorary certificate. He also gave them the cruise tickets as a gift. The kids were thrilled. They had long dreamt of a good, relaxing vacation. <laughs> they just got lucky! The sisters packed their suitcases and hopped into a taxi. They were already imagining themselves sunbathing on the cruise ship deck. The taxi pulled up to Zuza's house. He rushed outside with his suitcases, but Taya blocked the way. Where do you think you're going? He's f***ed! Zuza's pregnant wife was furious when she found out that her husband was planning a vacation without her. She clearly explained that he was not going anywhere and he would be staying home to help with the household. You should take this just in case! The sisters went on vacation without Zuza. The taxi arrived at the port. When the sisters saw their ship, they were greatly surprised. In their imagination, it was supposed to be entirely different. Anna looked more closely at the ticket and read the fine print. Cruise to the North Pole? Holy <laughs> Now, the girls realized that they wouldn't need sunglasses and sunscreen on this journey. But despite all that, they decided not to give up on their planned vacation. Fugitive prisoners Viper and Chuchundra were adrift on an ice floe in the vast Arctic Ocean. It had been a long time since they had seen food or drinking water. The cold winds chilled them to the bone. 
the escapees were completely hopeless. The coveted shore still hadn't appeared on the horizon. Suddenly, Viper spotted a penguin leisurely swimming nearby. The escapees perked up. For the first time in a long, long while, they had the chance to catch some food. They tried to catch up with it. The penguin turned tail and ran. The escapees battled with all their might. Unfortunately, the penguin turned out to be a much more experienced swimmer and disappeared from sight. Viper was consumed by rage. She was seething with poisonous anger towards everything around her. At that moment, Chuchundra suddenly perked up. Land! Hurry up! Their disappointment from the unsuccessful hunt instantly evaporated when they saw the long-awaited shore. Upon reaching the shore, Viper and Chuchundra discovered fishing boats there. They realized that the island was inhabited. The escapees were amazed as they surveyed the structures of the northern island. Strangely, they hadn't come across any of the locals. They heard some strange sounds in the distance. The escapees ran to see what it was. What they saw was a bunch of local aborigines worshipping some idol. A shaman with a drum was sleeping around and chanting something, and the crowd did the same. The escapees had never seen anything like this before. But shortly after, the smell of food diverted Viper's attention. She noticed a makeshift dining area nearby. Tables were laden with food. While the aborigines were preoccupied with their mealtime prayer, the hungry convicts rushed towards the food. Viper began stuffing anything she could find into her mouth. Chuchundra dipped her head straight into a pot of soup and gulped down all of it. The aborigines finished their prayer and headed for lunch. They were furious when they saw strangers pilfering their food. <laughs> Looks like we're fu- RUN! The convicts ran for their lives, with the enraged aborigines in hot pursuit. The thieves tried to find refuge from a bunch of crazy savages in a cave, but inside they encountered a corridor filled with various obstacles and traps, sharp axes, poisonous darts, and giant icicles that dropped from the ceiling. This trap's corridor led the convicts into an enormous hall, in the center of which stood an idol adorned with gold. The aborigines surrounded them, threatening them with sharp spears. Viper tore off a sharp crystal from the idol to use it as a makeshift knife for defense. Suddenly the aborigines mellowed, lowered their spears and knelt before the convicts. Viper couldn't comprehend what was happening. Why did they stop attacking? Carrying that mysterious crystal and some gold with them, the criminals made their exit. They launched a boat into the water and sailed away from that strange island. The band of poachers roamed the expanses of the northern sea on their fishing vessel, named Lucky. Their main target was to capture rare white sharks. They hunted them and sold them for some good money on the Roblox black market. <laughs> Bullseye! Suddenly, the poacher spotted a boat on the horizon. We're here! Help us! The poacher's ship headed towards the pleading criminals. Viper and Chuchundra boarded, instantly regretting it as the poachers pointed their weapons at them. Ooh. Hello, ladies! You'll have to pay for the travel! The duo found themselves trapped. In order to ransom themselves, Chuchundra emptied all the gold she had taken from the cave onto the deck. Holy <laughs> shit! The poachers started splitting the money. They pushed and cursed each other just like barbarians. It was right at that moment a magical energy started emanating from the fighting poachers and towards Viper's crystal. She was greatly surprised. The crystal began to shimmer. 
she quickly hid it in her pocket, far from the greedy poachers. Finally, the fuss and commotion was over. Welcome on board! <laughs> the criminal authorities became the poachers' prisoners. They were bound with thick chains. The poachers continued fishing as if nothing had happened. Viper watched them with envy. She liked their way of life. Judging by the amount of gold, jewelry and the luxurious food on the table, she understood that the poachers made some good money from their shady business. I wish I could be the master of the seas. When she made that wish, Viper felt a burning sensation in her pocket where the crystal was. A bright light began to shine through her clothes. A magical vortex formed in the water right next to the ship. And from there emerged a massive sea creature. The whole crew froze in shock. I hear in a day, my lord. The poachers began to voice their wishes to the creature. But it didn't respond to their words. Viper decided to try her luck as well. She shouted, Set us free! The creature leaned down towards the duo and directed its magical icy breath at them. The chains instantly froze and shattered into small pieces. The poachers were truly frightened. They didn't expect their captive to have such a powerful ally. <laughs> so that's it, you fa Punish them! The monster used its icy breath to turn the poachers into frozen blocks of ice. You are such a good boy! What is your name? You can call me anything. Then you'll be freezy! <laughs> Viper was so happy about her new, obedient pet. Now, she obviously wanted to test its abilities. I want you to get me more fish. The dragon descended into the depth of the sea. In moments, it pulled a couple of white sharks on board, but it only whetted her appetite. More fish! The dragon loaded a dozen more sharks on board. Viper's greed knew no bounds. I want more fish! The dragon tossed an enormous whale onto the deck. The ship couldn't withstand such a load and split in half. The victims found themselves back in the cold seawater. Shithead! What have you done? I completed your order. Now we have to look for another ship. The chilly waters made the criminals right atop the sea monster, searching for a new ship. On the northern sea cruise, the sisters shivered from the cold. And not only that, there was literally nothing to do on the ship. The pool had no takers among the vacationers, because the water had turned to ice. Hot dishes turned cold instantly. The monotonous northern landscape quickly grew tiresome. But this day was special as Viper was approaching them riding her newly obtained hat. That's the kind of sheep I need! <laughs> the sea dragon headed towards the sister's ship. Passengers froze in terror at the sight of this enormous creature. Attack! People scattered in all directions, while Freezy was turning them into icy blocks, one after another. Go f get them! Chuchundra boarded the ship, making her way towards the captain's bridge scattering everyone in her path. The sisters rushed out of their cabin and saw the sea monster. Look! Viper's right on top of the dragon! What the <laughs> f That was the moment when the sisters came into Viper's side. Well, well, look who we've got here! Freezy, fetch! Viper launched an attack with her icy breath at the sisters. The girls rushed back inside the ship. Anna managed to hide, but luck was not on Vika's side. She turned into a nice block. Vika! No! V 
Viper laughed heartily at the frozen Vika, relishing this moment of cold revenge. Chuchundra burst into Captain Vrungel's cabin and began to growl at him. Who the hell are you? The captain didn't lose his cool and fired his gun. The bullet hit the iron mask, knocking Chuchundra down. Suddenly, Viper flew in through the window, incapacitating the captain. Chuchundra lifted him by the collar for a conversation with the boss. This ship is mine! Turn it around now! Ladies, this old barge has no brakes! The captain explained to the hijackers that they usually use an anchor to stop the ship, but he wouldn't do it. This response sent Viper into a rage. You f nuts! Anna pulled out the rescue beacon and activated the distress signal. The radio distress signals were transmitted from the beacon to a space satellite, and from there they bounced back to Zusa's house. The computer whiz realized the emergency and immediately abandoned his tasks, rushing to his keyboard. In a matter of seconds, he determined the sister's location and dispatched his evacuation drone. The captain couldn't withstand Viper's relentless attacks. All right, I'll drop the anchor. He rushed to the helm and pressed the stop button. The anchor plunged into the water. Viper and Chuchundra were very pleased with the successful capture of the ship. While they were celebrating, Zusa's drone lifted the sisters from the deck right before their eyes. What the fuck? Viper ran up to the shattered window and shouted at her eyes dragon in anger. Crazy! Don't let them escape! The magical monster grabbed its icy breath on the sisters, but Zuzia skillfully maneuvered the drone to evade it. The freezing energy of the monster didn't reach its target. The sisters' evacuation was successful, much to Viper's charging. We'll meet again, bitch! Already in Zuzia's house, Anna recounted what had happened, how Viper's dragon had turned Vika into a frozen icicle. They needed to defrost her quickly. Zuzia decided to take action. He decided to use a regular gas torch, but the ice was stubborn. The heat from the torch was not enough. The guys tried to dispel Vika in a super hot Russian sauna. They even cranked up the heat to 100 degrees Celsius and whisked her with birch brooms. But this ice didn't even start to melt, and the scorching heat knocked Anna out. Unfazed, they even deep frozen Vika into a volcano's core. In all other instances, that would work, but here the stubborn ice remained unyielding. Oh, what the hell! It was an epic fail. After diving deep into the web for answers, Zuza realized that the laws of physics were powerless here, and they were dealing with some supernatural magic. His search queries on the topic led him to a clairvoyant witch named Vanga. That's what I need! Somewhere far in the ocean waters, Viper's ship and her monster were simply outrageous, ramming small fishing boats at full speed, just for fun. <laughs> Fame of her and her gigantic monster were spreading rapidly. In no time, another group of maritime daredevils decided to join Viper. These were the Somali pirates. A daily queue formed for appointments with the famous blind clairvoyant Vanga. Our heroes didn't want to waste their time waiting in a long line, so they decided to use a clever trick to get to her. I'll just ask one thing. But as soon as they enter, they somehow found themselves at the very back of the line again. The kids were completely baffled. Zuzu was deeply frustrated. He stormed towards the hut's entrance again, and once more, ended up at the very end of the queue. Finally, they realized that the enchanted queue to Vanga could only be honestly waited in. Meanwhile, 
Viper and her Somali pirates were in the midst of hijacking an AliExpress cargo tanker. The tanker's crew had evacuated in sheer terror on a lifeboat, but the dragon's icy breath prevented their escape. Using a special catapult, the pirates landed on the deck of the captured tanker. They were seemingly thrilled with their substantial catch. Finally, Anna and Zuzia got their turn to see Vanga. But before they could utter a word, she began to speak on her own. Intangible warmth will set Vika free. But first, you'll need to defeat the monster with the help of sacred fire. The kids were shocked by how much Vanga knew, and they realized that they needed to think deeply about her riddles. Meanwhile, Viper was riding her icy dragon. She continued hijacking AliExpress tankers with her Somali pirates. All of the stolen goods were sold by the bandits at half the real price. Huge crowds of Robloxers came here looking for bargains to buy new iPhones and PlayStations. It was a highly profitable business for the maritime pirates. Zuzia and Anna attempted to decipher the mysterious words of Vanga. It was clear to them that the monster referred to Viper's icy dragon, but they couldn't figure out what sacred fire meant. After some online research, Zuza found information about an ancient Roblox tradition. Back in those times, primitive Robloxers used olive oil to ignite a fire during a ritual, considering this fire sacred. Armed with this knowledge, Zuza came up with an idea. Without wasting any time, he began explaining the next steps of their plan to Anna. The olive oil factory was conveniently located right near the port, and a special pipe transported the precious liquid onto the ship in a dedicated tank for transportation. The goal for the kids was to capture this ship. Using her signature hypnotic skills, Anna got rid of the unnecessary crew. Zuza, in his turn, put his robot in charge of the ship's control and attached a powerful, remote-controlled, explosive device to the olive oil tank. As a final touch, they disguised the tank with an AliExpress poster. After the ship set sail, Zuza kept a close eye on its movements through the robot captain's eyes. Viper's pirate fleet roamed the seas in the search of new plunder. Another ship appeared on the horizon. Peering through her binoculars, Viper spotted the coveted label Ali Express. Straight ahead! Prepare to board! The pirates began executing the plan. Crazy! Attack! The fearless monster swam ahead, while Zuza monitored what was happening through the visual sensors of the robot captain. They're closing in! Somali pirates were preparing for the takeover. Freezy was unrelenting. Viper was eagerly anticipating it. <laughs> when the attackers approached their target, Zuza activated the bomb. A powerful explosion resounded. The destructive shockwave blew away Viper's ship like a splinter. Screaming loudly, the dragon writhed in pain. The sacred fire of olive oil melted it like ice cream. <laughs> Yay! So the witch was right! Two silhouettes appeared on the surface of the sea. Viper and Chichundra had lost everything, but they still had the magical crystal. F*** me! I'll f*** whole Roblox up! After defeating Viper's monster, the friends gathered at Zuzia's house, getting ready to defrost Vika. Despite all of Anna's efforts, her sister remained frozen solid. Oh jeez, what is this intangible warmth? Seems like the witch tricked us. Someone rang the doorbell. Yay, it's the pizza! 
Good morning. Here's your order. When the pizza delivery guy Nordy looked at the Vika, he froze in amazement. It was love at first sight. He ran closer to her. She is so beautiful. But what happened to her? That's all because of the ice curse. Poor girl. Suddenly a miracle happened. The magical ice began to melt from Nordy's hug. The intangible warmth turned out to be his genuine love. The ice melted. Vika saw some kind of a weirdo right in front of her. Angered to the bone, she pushed him away. But Nordy was determined. He kept on trying to win the heart of his beloved. I love you. Get the f out. Our hopeless romantic rushed out onto the street. But Nordy was happy. Now he had a purpose in his life. Finally, nothing stood in the way of the sisters' embrace. Friendship and love proved stronger than black magic. <laughs> After a long journey in the shipwreck, Viper and Chichundra finally reached the shore. Exhausted, they collapsed onto the eagerly awaited land. <laughs> what are you mumbling? <laughs> Bless you! Police sirens wailed in the distance. Someone among the frightened residents must have called the police to catch the escapees. We need to disguise ourselves! The prisoners snagged clothes that were drying in the neighboring backyard. The once grotesque duo suddenly sported a more stylish look. Did you pick an infection? The bandit girls set out in search of medicine. Finding the nearest pharmacy, they were surprised to discover that the need for the medicine extended beyond just themselves. I think I need... um... Forgot the name! Don't keep us waiting, old crone! The people in the queue began to argue. Viper's magical crystal started absorbing the negative energy and changed its color. Chichundra ran out of patience. <laughs> Pharmacy visitors realized that it was better to let the troublemakers go first. Get me something for a cold. That'll be a thousand Robux. How much? You insane... <laughs> the bandits decided it was time to stop being polite with a greedy pharmacist. They locked him in the fridge to reflect upon his behavior. Now the pharmacy's cash register was in Viper's hands. Of course, she wanted such a profitable business as well. I wish I could earn as much from people's diseases. At that moment, her crystal illuminated the pharmacy with a bright glow. A magical vortex formed on the floor, and a hideous green monster emerged from it. The pharmacy visitors rushed out onto the street terrified. I hear and obey, my lord. Oh, wow! I have a new toy! So what is your power? I bring disease and suffering. Hmm, okay, let us see. Chuchundra opened the refrigerator with a test subject. Fever demonstrated his magical power on him. No! The pharmacist's skin turned green and was covered with red spots. His body temperature skyrocketed and weakness spread throughout his entire body. Please, I need medicine! That'll be a thousand Robux! With his last ounce of strength, the poor guy handed over the Robux. Viper realized that with the help of this monster, she could become fabulously rich. I'm gonna call you Fever. You have to bring me more customers. The monster set out to fulfill its master's order. And you'll take care of my competitors. Chuchundra managed to improve her health with pills and vitamins. She immediately gained her strength to carry out Viper's plan. Chaos ensued in the city as a gigantic blob of slime infected everyone in its path with its bacteria. 
Every unlucky Robloxer who got on its way was struck down with a terrible illness. Chichundra was actively destroying the pharmacies of Viper's competitors, so that all the sick people would go to their place to buy medicine. Meanwhile, Anna and Vika were keeping an eye on the playground, hoping to catch a gang specializing in stealing expensive children's toys. Their accomplice, Zuza, was monitoring the situation from the air just as usual. The bandits appeared on the scene. While the moms were engrossed in chit-chat, the bandits set about stealing toys. Evidence was collected. The sisters set out to capture the gang fully armed. But then Nordy appeared in their path. My love, this is for you. Oh man, I'm busy. I brought you some delicious candies. Anna continued to neutralize the bandits single-handedly. But at that moment, Fever appeared on the playground. With a series of accurate spits, it infected everyone within its reach, sparing not even the children. Poor Anna got a triple dose of the virus. Fever released a volley of contagion towards the kids. Vika reacted in time to the trap. She and Nordy managed to survive. Not finding any more healthy Robloxers within the radius of infection, Fever moved on. Anna, what's wrong? <coughs> Zuza saw that Anna was badly injured and decided to evacuate the team. All right, let's move. The sister jumped into the van and Zuza sped off. On the way there, Anna was only getting worse. <coughs> we have to do something right now. Zuza noticed Grandma Betty. I'm sure your grandma must have some pills. The kids parked just near the house. Grandma Bet. <coughs> Anna lost consciousness. Betty got very scared seeing this. They laid the sick girl on the couch and measured her temperature. Good lord, she is burning up! The friends tried every possible way to ease Anna's condition, but none of the medicines from Betty's home first aid kit helped. The temperature only continued to rise. If her temperature rises right up to 100, she will die! Zuza called the hospital, and the worried doctor picked up the phone. Yes, I'm listening. Hello, my friend feels sick. Can you help? The hospital is overcrowded. Way too many infected. The group decided to go to the pharmacy and find the right medicine for Anna. Please hurry up. She's only getting worse. Zuza and Vika rushed at full speed. On the way, the kids <laughs> encountered crowds of infected people. Where the hell did this thing come from? I don't know, but we have to save Anna first. Vika and Zuza reached the nearest pharmacy, but it was destroyed. The same situation applied to all other pharmacies. What the f <laughs> Finally, the kids found a pharmacy that wasn't destroyed, but there was a giant line of sick Robloxers waiting outside. The familiar bandits were actively selling medicine at a very high price behind the counter. Luke, isn't that Viper? This is totally her doing! Vika grabbed the guns, marched into an attack on the bandits. Seeing her, Viper gave an order to the monster. Fever? Fetch! The dangerous bacteria flew towards Vika. She managed to dodge them all. In a state of utter panic, the sick people in the queue scattered in all directions. Sitting in a hiding spot, Vika fired a whole creep at Fever. But it turned out that the bullets caused no harm to that creature. Zuza's drone entered the game with an explosive charge. Direct hit! Explosion! But even such an injury didn't destroy the monster. <laughs> Bunch of losers. The kids couldn't do anything against Fever. The only thing they could do was to retreat. What's wrong with it? Is it immortal? No clue. 
Did you notice the crystal on Viper's neck? Seemed rather weird to me. Suddenly, Vika's phone rang. Yes, Anna's temperature climbed to 70 degrees. You should hurry up. The kids were quite literally in a logical deadlock. They didn't understand how to save Anna. Zuza began replaying the scene of Anna's infection in his mind and concluded that a magical monster required a magical remedy against the disease. To this clairvoyant, Vanga know what we should do. That's right, let's visit her! Zuza and Vika rush to the clairvoyant's house. After waiting in the line as usual, they got an appointment with her. The kids didn't even have time to say hello when Vanga started speaking. Our smaller brothers and my special magical elixir will help you save Anna, but you must hurry. They took the bottle and set out to solve the seer's riddle. Why don't you just give them this power? They're not ready yet. Anna was getting worse and worse. Hurry up, it's 80 degrees. Vika was enraged. Why the hell do we need this elixir? And who are the smaller brothers? Suddenly, a dog ran out onto the road in front of the van. Zuza slammed on the brakes. The kids bumped their heads pretty hard. That's when Zuza had an epiphany. Animals! Animals are our smaller brothers! It made sense for Vika as well. At the same time, she saw a vet clinic. Maybe we should go there to find that medicine? I think this is the way. The kids decided to test this hypothesis. Inside, they encountered a veterinarian treating a cat. He seemed very, very strange to them. What, what, what is your question? <laughs> we need your help. The kid's request was a little weird for the vet, but after giving it some thought, he suggested trying a powder antibiotic for animals. But, but, but I'm not sure we, we can use it on, on the pe people. The kids decided to take the risk. Vika added the magic elixir to the powder. The powder changed color and sparkled. I think it's working! The doctor decided to make the medicine more convenient for taking in. He poured the powder into a special machine designed for creating medicinal capsules. Everything was ready. The kids warmly thanked the veterinarian. Thank you so much! I'll b b be here if you need me. And they rushed to Anna. Her temperature was close to 100 degrees. And their homemade medicine was the last hope to save the girl's life. What is this medicine? The temperature on the thermometer started to drop. The kids sighed with relief. And Anna came to her senses. Did I miss something? Everyone was thrilled with Anna's return to normal. The team decided to deal with the villainous viper. Now, they had an effective weapon against that virus. They decided to use the capsules as ammunition for their weapons. They filled an old aviation bomb from Betty's late husband's collection with these capsules. Armed to the teeth, the team set out to eliminate the Scorch. Please be careful! Viper and Chuchundra were rejoicing at the endless stream of customers. The cash register had long ran out of space. The bandits were stacking their profits in boxes. <laughs> we are rich! Near the pharmacy queue, Anna appeared and started handing out magical capsules to everyone. Take this, everyone! Yo, guys, they're giving away medicine for free! The line immediately headed for the freebies. Where are they going? Viper noticed Anna. She was healing all of her customers. Fever? Seek her! The monster went on the attack. Dangerous bacteria flew towards Anna, but she dodged them all. Vika attacked the monster with a shotgun. And this time, 
it was successful. Fever slowed down. Viper couldn't believe her own eyes. That's it! B you are done! The bandits rushed into the attack. At that moment, Zeus's drones arrived. One of them evacuated the sisters, while the other dropped a bomb on the monster. A powerful explosion ensued. Everything around was showered with green and factious slime. Viper and Chuchundra felt all the symptoms of the magical disease. <laughs> Run! Our team returned to the base. Nordy was already waiting for them. My love, I have a surprise just for you. The guy finalized the sisters' agency signboard. Anti-villain and magical monsters agency? That's right, you are real superheroes. But Vika didn't particularly like Nordy's surprise. Dad, what have you done? But I just... You better get lost! As to Anna and Zuza, they liked the new sign. The guys headed to the office to await new exciting cases. The updated sign, Agency of Sisters Against Villains and Magical Monsters, began to attract new clients. In the midst of a busy day, a distinguished man walked into the office. Good day! I need to expel a poltergeist from my house. Such an unusual case was a novelty for the sisters. I'm paying in cash. But business is business. In the end, they gladly accepted the job. All right, let's get this done. The sisters and the client exited the office, and right after them, a visibly anxious and pregnant Taya stormed in. Zuzia, I want to eat. Zuzer rushed to the refrigerator. From there, he retrieved the last slice of pizza. He intended to give it to his wife when suddenly, Moppet snatched the pizza and immediately swallowed it without blinking an eye. Already furious from hunger, Taya plunged into a wild rage. You freaking dog! The little dog dodged the drama queen's mediocre kick and ran out into the street. There he chased after the sister's car and skillfully jumped into the passenger seat right next to the client. You wanna come with us, huh? The whole group went on the mystical mission together. Meanwhile, the bandits Viper and Chuchundra were squatting under the bridge, recovering from a severe illness. In addition, they suffered from intense hunger. I want to eat! With the last of her strength, Viper got up and kicked Chuchundra. Get up and let's move it, bitch! With a show of compliance, the giantess carried out the command, after which Viper leaped onto her shoulder. Let's go and get food! To start with, they attempted to snatch hot dogs from the teenagers, but the nimble youngsters outran the bandits, eluding their grasp. Little scumbags! Next, they tried their hand at fishing, but the duo couldn't catch anything. The fish proved to be more cunning. Come fish! The bandits were about to give up, but then they got incredibly lucky. They stumbled upon a whole warehouse of food supplies. Let's go! The work shift at the warehouse was flowing in its usual rhythm, and the bandits appeared and disrupted everything. Hungry Viper immediately rushed to the food, while Chuchundra went to deal with the local workers. Having easily dealt with her opponents, Chuchundra herself began to indulge in eating. Satiated and content, the gang of female bandits reveled in their new base. Enterprising Viper understood that they could never consume all of this food. So she came up with an idea to venture into the food business. Only the freshest farm products were sold at the local market. Against the backdrop of father's stalls, Viper's new shop looked rather unappealing. Come on in, 
Best canned food? From the very beginning, the gang's business didn't go well. Customers were not interested in their goods at all. Everyone bought from other sellers. This angered Viper a lot. Go get me some customers! Chuchunja was very bad at advertising and, as usual, resorted to brute force. Just one look at the formidable strongswoman and Robloxers would cave in. Idiot! Out of desperation, Viper decided to turn to her infamous magic crystal. Oh, crystal, I need more customers! But nothing happened. She didn't understand how the crystal was working. At the same time, there was a loud argument at the neighboring stall. The greedy seller refused to give a 10 Robux discount for tomatoes to the poor old man. I said 50 Robux! But I only got 40! A magical energy started emanating from the wicked trader, and it headed straight for the Viper's crystal. She noticed it. Viper began to think recalling previous instances of its activation. She remembered that during all those moments something bad was happening that generated magical energy for her crystal. Having finally realized the main principle of activation, she made her wish. I want all the food in Roblox to be exclusively mine! The crystal lit up with a red glow and a magical vortex formed right in the middle of the market. From it emerged a creepy orb-shaped monster. Your wish is my command. Go and eat all my competitors' food! The monster immediately went to work, greedily devouring all the food of the market. Sellers and buyers, horrified, scattered in all directions. Go on, eat, eat! <laughs> Only one vendor from the nearby stall stood his ground until the end. Get the hell out! This is mine! The market was deserted. Only the gang with their monster remained. Viper decided that with the help of this food devourer, they would create a shortage of products in Roblox. People would only be able to buy food from their warehouse, making them the richest. Go watch the warehouse, and we're gonna visit a supermarket. I'm gonna call you Starvy. Whatever you say. Meanwhile, Zuza and Taya were shopping for groceries in the main supermarket of the city. To never starve again, they decided to stock up. The card was filling up with various delicious treats. When suddenly Viper and her monster stormed in. Gobble it all up! The monster began devouring the products. The supermarket shelves emptied before their eyes. The appetite of that creature knew no bounds. You glutton! Ty and Zusa simply kept shopping until they ran into an old acquaintance. Viper? Ha! <laughs> How fortunate! Starvey, get them! At her command, the monster began sucking the food from their shopping cart. The kids froze in shock. Only a watermelon remained, and Taya grabbed it with both hands. This watermelon is mine! Let go of it! Not wanting to part with her favorite tree, Taya herself got sucked into the mouth of the hungry monster. Taya! When the sisters arrived at their client's house, he began explaining his problem. It turned out that recently food in his house started disappearing. He believed that a hungry poltergeist had taken up residence in his home. Are you sure? You'll see for yourselves. Entering the house, they immediately went to the kitchen. The client took a chocolate bar out of his pocket and placed it on the table. Then he asked everyone present to close their eyes. It all sounded quite absurd, but the sisters and Moppet complied with his request. Now open your eyes! 
Nothing happened. The chocolate bar still lay on the table. The sisters were quite annoyed that their time was being wasted. All right, let's try one more time. Everyone left the kitchen. The client closed the door and the sisters stood waiting. Upon opening the door again, they saw that the chocolate bar had indeed disappeared. Didn't I tell you? Moppet noticed a small child's bow on the floor. Sniffing it, he jumped out of the window. The sisters and the client ran after him into the street. Moppet stopped at the door to the pantry. Why don't we check what's in there? <laughs> Shocked by what happened, Zuzu rushed out of the supermarket, jumped into his van and sped away from Viper and her terrifying monster. Pissed your pants, boy! At that moment, a truck with fresh food from Roblox Food Farms pulled up to the supermarket. Now Viper's main target became obvious. So here's where the products come from! The truck parked at the entrance to the supermarket. Starvy, attack! The monster began devouring the food. Hell! <laughs> Seeing the poltergeist, the sisters prepared for a showdown. Come out! Much to their surprise, a frightened little girl emerged from the darkness. I'm sorry, I won't do that again. And you are? I'm Tiffany. It turned out that Tiffany was a homeless orphan. She used to live in an orphanage, but she was constantly bullied there. Unable to endure the humiliation, she ran away and began to live a wandering life, stealing from Robloxer's homes for sustenance. The story of Tiffany brought tears to everyone's eyes. The sisters themselves were orphans and understood how hard it was for this poor girl. Wanna join us? We'll get you some food. Really? This case was solved and the kids decided to go to the office together. Meanwhile, Starve reached the Roblox food farms. The monster began greedily devouring the entire harvest. Even the cows, grazing on pasture, couldn't escape this terrible fate. The shelves of grocery stores emptied, and without food supplies, all the stores began to close. Roblox faced a food crisis. Breaking news! If some of you need food, you should visit Viper's Food Warehouse. <laughs> Good job! Here is your money. And you, don't forget your Robux. Everything was going according to Viper's plan. Soon, huge lines of hungry Robloxers formed at her warehouse. One can of beans, please. Thousand Robux. That's too expensive! But there was nothing people could do. Everyone had to buy food from Viper for a huge amount of money. When the sisters returned to their office, the first thing they wanted to do was to feed Tifa something delicious. But to their disappointment, the fridge turned out to be completely empty. Right at that moment, Zuzi rushed into the office. That monster ate Taya! He told the sisters everything about the new Viper's monster that ate Taya. And what do we do now? I managed to place a tracker on Viper. In a desperate attempt to survive, Sousa managed to activate a high-tech nanobot, which inconspicuously attached itself to Viper's back. Without wasting time, he started connecting to this device. The nanobot flew higher and started its broadcast. All this thanks to my magical crystal. That's how she did that. 
She was using magic! The guys realized that they couldn't handle it without Vanga's help. Yeah. Moppet, look after Tifa. We're gonna be back soon. <coughs> One pure soul must go inside the evil. And then everything will fall into place. The kids received a mysterious riddle yet again. And they had to think really hard. They were trying to solve it on their way back. Pure soul, maybe she was talking about kids. And evil is Viper's monster. It all came down to one thing. The monster had to devour Tiffany. Near the office, it suddenly downed on Zuza. He turned on an old YouTube advertisement for fruit juice featuring kids in costumes of various fruits. We can dress her as an apple. Are you serious? <laughs> Little Tifa didn't understand anything and simply rejoiced at her new bright costume. Yay, I am an apple! She looked so pure that it tore sister's hearts apart. We're sending her to certain death. The number of hungry Robloxers near Viper's warehouse grew even larger. Disguised Tifa was walking towards Starvi. The guys watched her from cover. Wow, he looks like Pac-Man! Just as expected, the foolish monster mistook the girl for a big apple and started sucking her into its mouth. Whee! I'm flying! Flying through the dark tunnel, Tiffany landed in a spacious cave. Looking around, she was amazed by the sight of enormous mountains of food. Next to the product counter stood pregnant Taya. But please, I am so hungry! No money, no food! You pay or you go away! Tiffany got furious with this trader who claimed all the food for himself. What if your family was starving right now and would also stand in the queue for food? The girl's reproaches triggered a guilty conscience in the trader. He felt very ashamed. I'm so sorry. Uh, please help yourself. This turned out to be that exact pure soul that had to destroy evil from within. The cave shook and filled with white light. Starvy began to swell and twitch in horrifying convulsions. And then a bright flash occurred. After the explosion, Starvy collapsed and everything around was covered in food. Starving Robloxers mad from hunger rushed at each other for food. The guys ran to Taya and Tifa. They were indescribably happy to see them both alive. Viper was in furious rage. I'm so sick of you! The negative magical energy from Robloxers fighting over food charged Viper's crystal. I want this mob to die! The crystal created a magical vortex, and a giant huggy demon emerged from it. The Robloxers ignored the food and fled with screams. Crush them like bugs! I'll do as you say. The Huggy Demon wanted to crush our heroes. Unable to change anything, they froze in horror. But suddenly, the time stopped. Yet another miracle happened, and the entire team found themselves in Vanga's little hut. They didn't understand what was happening. The time has come. Drink the magical elixir. Without asking anything, each of them drank their elixir. Reverse teleportation occurred. The kids were surprised by their new costumes. Are we superheroes now? Yes. Anna's superpower turned out to be the ability to create a protective shield. Vika gave eagle vision for the most accurate shooting. Her dart hit Huggy Demon right in the eye. While Zuza 
started the car by thought and directed it towards the monster. The car soared off a ramp right into Hagi Demon and knocked him off his feet with a powerful explosion. The giant fell right under the sharp pine tree. I have the crystal! You can't beat me! Right at that moment, the crystal detached from Viper's neck and floated in the air. What the f- This was Tiffany's new power. Now, she could turn invisible. You naughty little b- The bandits realized that they had zero chance to win, so they ran away saving their skins. Why the f don't I have any superpower? <laughs> oh, I think I'm in labor. Taya was in the midst of giving birth. In agony, she pushed with all her might when finally the baby was born. To the doctor's surprise, he turned out to be quite unusual. Apparently, all of Taya's superpowers were inherited by the kid. <laughs>